Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier. The feature race at Del Mar on Sunday is the $100,000 Betty Grable Stakes at seven furlongs. Carded is race number eight. You can bet it with a DRF Bets account. It's a very easy sign up at bets.drf.com and once you access your account, you access a 300% deposit match. Here's the field for the Betty Grable Stakes. Nice field of fillies and mares, Matt. Let's kick things off with the morning line favorite. The number three just grazed me and boy, I really love the way she won that fleet treat stakes at Del Mar at this seven for a long distance during the summer meet and I think her two subsequent starts around a two turn mile both okay one against true royalty I didn't think she had the greatest trip and last time out she ran into a freak show yeah and to, to be frank I just I don't think that's what her game is I don't think she's a two turn horse I think seven eighths of a mile one turn that's really what her game is I said to you before we came on the only thing I'm disappointed about with her running in this spot is that if she does what I think she's capable of on Sunday, it's probably going to hurt her price because I wanted to see her in the La Brea and get somewhere in that six or seven to one range on opening day at Santa Anita. Instead, uh, I have a feeling we're going to see a pretty good show on Sunday. She likes to rally from just off of the pace. And as we see from the time form U.S. pace projector, there could be some cooking up front. That red bar from time form U.S. indicates that the pace will be fast and just grazed me. We see second to last in the early going. So a fast pace could benefit this daughter of grazing. We also have a positive formulator fact for just grazed me's trainer, Phil D'Amato. Over the past three years with older dirt horses cutting back from routes to sprints of a 31 to 44 day layout. Off. We've got 46% winners, 10 of 13 on the board, and a $3.50 ROI. Just Graze Me ticks a lot of boxes. The two love a honey badger is on the lead, according to the pace projector, and this filly is coming off a gate to wire win against Calbreds in an off the turf five furlong race. Lots of times tough to rate those efforts, especially when they come up with big buyers like this one earned in 88. I didn't think much of the field she beat that day, and I thought on October 13th, you needed to be close. And that's where Love a Honey Badger was, right on a chooch. Yeah, I mean, it was basically a merry-go-round. The top three finishers were one, two, three the entire way around the racetrack. So it makes me kind of think that there's a scenario where that number and that fig may be a little bit dressed up. Kind of want to fade, I hate to say, all the horses coming out of that race. I believe there's three of them, but I don't really love the race as a whole. And like you say, look, she's got big speed. I don't know that this distance is necessarily ideal. I know she's one for one at it, but you know what her game is. There's going to be speed. They're going to send her and try to take them as far as they can. Maybe the runner-up in that race, SY Sky, has license to improve because the California Disc Def was her first start in over a year. Maybe she needed the race. She was up close to the pace. She couldn't get past Love a Honey Badger. And before she went on the layoff, she was pretty good as a fourth time starting three-year-old she earned a 91 buyer speed figure and she's got good tactical speed now whether she'll ever get back to those races that's a big question mark but i like the fact she's here for damato yeah agreed i mean I, like you say if you think she can get back to that run two starts back she's certainly interesting the problem i have is that best run of her career was on the turf and it makes me wonder you know she's okay in this situation i i think she has a puncher's chance but i do wonder if she's better suited for the grass meet and greet finished fourth in that distaff and i wonder if she was compromised by the lack of pace in that race and the speed favoring nature of the santa Anita track she tried to rally from mid pack passed a couple of tired horses in the lane and i think a lot of things were working against her but you see her win on turf two starts back maybe that's where her future lies because her dirt buyers aren't cutting it right now that's the way I kind of look at it. She's capable on the main track, but in a race like this where I think it could take something approaching a 90 on the main track, she just hasn't been producing something relatively close to that. Her best race by far from a figure standpoint came on the turf, and I think that's where she belongs. Similar situation with the 7, one fast broad. Now, she's 3 for 7 lifetime on dirt, only 1 for 6 on turf, but by far her career best buyer speed figure came on the lawn. That was last time out, and a pretty salty non-winners at two other than race at Santa Anita going a mile. Her races on dirt have always been solid, especially against Calbreds, and she'll get the right pace set up. You know, the interesting thing about One Fast Broad, when you just look at the uh, the career box in the upper right-hand corner, you would look at it and say, oh, well, she's three for six on dirt, and she's five for six in the money, and clearly that the main track is her better game. I happen to think, although she's one for six on grass, I think she's better on the grass, and I just think she's running into some tough cookies. To me, this is an instance where she's going to be coming from the back of the pack, 
I think a minor reward at best. I just don't love her on top. And again, I'd like to see her back on grass. Trainer Gary Sherlock's done a nice job with the five, show it and mow it, getting a very valuable graded stakes placing for this filly in her most recent race. A three-year-old filly going up against Sky Diamonds in anonymity. She didn't run badly at all, especially when anonymity came back and ran third in the Breeders' Cup filly and mare sprint with a 91 buyer. All things considered, we probably shouldn't rate her off the L.A. woman. She was overmatched. Her start two starts back going six furlongs was a really solid performance against a salty filly in Miss Sunset. My my one concerns the seven. I like her a little better at shorter distances. Yeah, agreed. And I also look at it, and through 16 lifetime starts, you're right, the Connections have done a really, really nice job placing her in realistic positions and getting sort of, you know, getting tactical with it. That L.A. woman, the idea was let's hit the board in a five-horse field. I think that was smart. I look at it and say, I don't know that you have any real room for upside at this point through 16 starts, career best fig of 88. And the other piece, too, is I, I hate to say it, three starts back. She got her doors blown off by just grazed me. I kind of feel like you're going to get a similar scenario. Turf to Dirt worked wonders for Spiced Perfection earlier this year in January. They're going to try it again. She ran in a very competitive edition of the Unzip Me Stakes. That's an open race going down the hill last time out. And she's kind of like one fast broad. She'll run on dirt. She'll run on turf. I think she's actually better on the dirt, and I think she could work out a really good mid-pack trip. If you're going to try to beat Just Grazed Me, it might be with Spice Perfection, because she's a hard hitter and she loves Del Mar. Yeah, she certainly is. And like you say, that Del Mar piece, that could be a very, very key sort of component to this three for five lifetime over the main track at Del Mar. You're right. I agree with you. I think she's considerably better on the dirt. And really, how can you argue nine times in the money from 10 lifetime starts, eight of those in the exacta? A couple of speeds bookend this field. On the far outside, the nine gorgeous Ginny comes up from Turf Paradise for trainer Robertino Diodoro. This horse, I didn't think faced much last time out in a $30,000 stake over there, but it was her first start since April. She's got a little bit of gas. I'm not sure if she's good enough to win a race like this. Her best buyer after eight starts is only a 79, and that came on turf. I'm going to be very interested to see how she's ridden. I know the outside draw, you would think that you want to take up a nice stalking position. I think the only way she can win this race is by going. I would be very aggressive and try to wire the field. And having said that, I don't think that's going to work. The filly with the best last buyer speed figure in this race is down towards the rail. The number one Mo C. Cal, 12 to 1 on the morning line off a 94 buyer win. Now, that race came on a wet track in an off-the-turf race in a short field over a speed-favoring track where she was able to control it. She won very easily. We've seen Peter Miller take horses and turn them around. And ever since Miller claimed this filly, she's run three good races. That dirt race was an explosion. Uh, I need to see it again, though, before I I'm going to back her, even at these odds. Yeah, I tell you what, I don't like her as a win candidate for the reasons you made mention, but I do think that slight turn back in distance, mm -hmm. she has a little bit of early speed. I'm using her underneath. I think there's a real scenario where she can get a piece of this thing at a big price. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Betty Grable stakes. We both like Just Grazed Me. We've both been fans of Just Grazed Me since day one. We both think that getting back to seven furlongs is going to help her. And as a closing sprinter in a race with pace, we're just hoping Tyler Bays can get a trip. If for those of you that have not seen her first two starts sprinting, I think you should take, you know, you owe it to yourself to go back and take a look because I thought both of them were spectacular. And I really think this is a filly that has plenty of potential going forward. She gets a little bit of pace. I think she comes and rolls them down late. And then they have an eye on something bigger back at Santa Anita on opening day. Give me numbers. Three, four, eight, one. Three, one, two, eight for me in the $100,000 Betty Grable stakes. The feature race at Del Mar on Sunday. Be sure to bet it with a DRF Bets account. You access a 300% deposit match on sign up at bets.drf.com. Approximate post time for the Betty Grable, 4 o'clock Pacific. Good luck.